Tell me about it when you were born. So I was born with um, a congenital defect known as a VSD or a ventricular septal defect, which is a fairly common uh, congenital defect known as a hole in the heart. Um, and it required surgery, open heart surgery. This was in the 80s. And um, um, my parents, I think they had trouble finding a surgeon willing to do it without blood. And so I ended up getting um, the procedure done when I was seven years old instead of an infant. Um, and uh, I think by, by that stage they'd found a surgeon willing to do it without blood um, yeah it, it was open heart surgery and they used other methods and possibly the the dialysis machine um, but it was still it added a, a fair bit of risk to the surgery um, and uh, it, you know it turned out okay I, I was fine and I recovered uh, as my parents would tell you to this day very proudly recovered better than the other children who had blood during that procedure and I think that's just a, a, a bit of ignorance that my parents have to you know, be able to sleep at night <laughs> um, but but yeah I was extremely scared at seven years old I, I knew what was happening I, I remember having a um, an elder in the congregation come and talk to me just before being wheeled in I remember there was I was told there was a risk there was a chance that I would die during surgery um, and how did that make you feel? It, look, it was it was terrifying to a seven-year-old girl. It's it's terrifying to know that you're going into a surgery that you might just die in. Um, and I, th I, as far as I'm, I can imagine that it, the the procedure has a risk of death, as any procedure does. But um, to make it bloodless is increasing the risk quite substantially so um so i i was aware of all of those things going in and i remember having an elder in the congregation come and say a prayer with me he talked to me about the paradise he just reminded me about you know all the animals in the paradise that that i would see which just terrified me even more it just because his words to me told me he thinks i might die yeah so um, look, my parents had really good intentions. Obviously, they thought they were saving my life. But looking back on it now that I have my own kids, I just it, it's very hard to get my head around. Tell, yeah. me about, tell me about growing up with mum and dad. We, we moved out to Parks when I was eight, which is a very small town of 10,000 people. Um, a congregation of 20, and um, and one elder actually, and uh, it was just a very severe, severely strict congregation. Um, that's for the majority of my upbringing. We lived there. Eventually, my father became an elder. It, it was pretty hard. I was the, like, it, it's it's hard being a teenager in a family of Jehovah's Witnesses when you don't believe that that's actually reality, that story that they tell you about the creation and Armageddon. It's, it's extremely stressful for a young person to feel alienated in that sort of situation, especially if they're the only one, and, and often they are the only one in that family, or they think they are because they can't talk to anybody else. Yeah. Um, it's a taboo subject, you know, to, to ask actual questions. And we, we did, um, I think for a little, I, I became a publisher, an unbaptized publisher, and there was a period where I was pioneering during high school, I think. And, um, yeah, so I, it, was, it was an extremely hard upbringing. I think I decided when I was about, oh, yeah, under 10, that this is like a fairy tale story. This is, doesn't seem like reality. This doesn't seem to be true. And did anything happen? I was 16 at the time and there was an incident where um, there, uh, there was a, I became involved with a, a boy in the congregation, another teenage boy, and, um, and there, there was some, you know, making out in a car that happened. Um, 
and I think the next day he, he rang the elders and he told the elders all about it. He confessed. And so the next day the, uh, I had the elders come around to my family home and um, I actually had an elder come in, to, one elder come into my bedroom and sit me down on the bed with the door shut and talk to me about this in um, quite extreme detail about um, the, this thing that happened with the, the boy just the night before, which was actually my first experience with a, with a, a boy, you know, um, which I can tell you mortifies a 16 year old girl beyond repair, basically. It, it was probably one of those traumatic experiences in my life that is very hard to get over. And, um, and then he forced me to tell my parents or, or he will tell my parents. He so gave on the night? Yeah, at the same visit. So he, he, he was in my bedroom, sitting on my bed, talking to me about you know, details about what had happened with this boy. And it, it just seemed so inappropriate to me that in the end I just, I, I ended up screaming at him to tell him to get out of my room. And, and then he gave me the ultimatum that either I tell my parents or he will. And, and I said to him that I can't really tell my parents something like that. I was so ashamed. I was just so ashamed. And so he ended up telling my parents. And, it, the, and then my, my father stepped down as an elder, which was my fault, you know, of course, in a 16 year old's brain. Um, and, and I think that's why. And so he stepped down as an elder. So the, the amount of you know, weight on my shoulders from that is just too much for a 16 year old who just made out with a boy in a car. You know, it, it just to bring the whole family down like that it was just too big. When, so when I was 16, I ended up telling my parents after thinking about it for maybe something like seven or eight years that I didn't believe in Jehovah, um, which was still to this day probably the scariest thing I've ever had to do. Um, and I wasn't sure if they would actually kill me or not, like literally. Uh, at the time and um, anyway we, we got through that and in the end what they said to me they actually handled it really calmly but what they said to me was look give it another couple of years and um, and then see how you feel just keep going to the meetings keep pioneering and just see how you feel um, and so I did that I did that very sincerely and I prayed and I went to meetings and I still went witnessing and, and all of those things and I just keep pretending for, for two more years and then when I was 18 I, I told my parents that I didn't want to go to the meeting one night and they they after a bit of back and forth they said look you know either go to the meeting like because you live under our roof that's our rules so you can either go to the meeting or you can leave and I was surprised that they said that so I I, I said to them I'll leave then and so I left and um, and they didn't stop me so I actually left home uh, knowing nobody uh, had no money had had nothing and just left with the clothes on my back and and that's how I moved out of home and I lived on the streets for a, a couple of weeks maybe and then um, ended up meeting some people and just living with them and just bouncing from one bad situation to another and got pregnant, had a child and, um, but, but yeah, they, they, uh, they actually did decide to, to let me leave rather than have a child live under their roof who doesn't go to the meetings. You have to give advice to someone who might be watching and having doubts, is unsure or wants to leave. What advice would you have for this kid? The advice that I would have for somebody in that situation who's a teenager and having doubts or wanting to leave the organisation or you know the meetings um, is that there is nowadays a community out there of fantastic people. All you have to do is look online. Um, there, there's regular meetups. There's so much support out there. You just need to tap into it. There's um, you know, th there's just so much. So 
um, stick to stick to your intuition about what you believe in if you know now then you know and trust your intuition about that but um but definitely reach out there's so much people out there willing to help you on facebook on youtube just different websites there, there's endless possibilities um i wish i had that when i was when i'd come out it, it's something that you go through that you feel completely on your own you think you're the only one going through that and I have thought that for the last you know 20 years and um, and it's just it's not true There's, it's such a common story people leave this religion they it doesn't you know it, it it doesn't ring true to them it doesn't work for them or whatever and it's okay to you stick to your guns and you know yeah you know what what you're doing <laughs>